Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast that explores Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jim Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. I know what's going to happen next. Wait, what? I know what's going to happen next. What's going to happen next? your hair is starting to look good, which means you're going to cut it. I'm pretty soon. Oh, my gosh. Pretty soon. You, you have you know no idea what no, you're doing you with hair. You have no idea how long it takes. First first of all, I've had hair twice as long as you that. You have no idea how the, long it takes to blow dry. Yeah, I do. I My hair used to be twice as long as yeah, the easily. You still think yeah. you never blew dry. Yeah, I did. You blew dry it every day. No, you did. Yeah, I did. Yep. No, first of all, that takes discipline and planning, and yep. neither of them are your strong suits. First of all, I'm a pretty disciplined person, and second what? of all, in anything that I'm interested in. What? Yeah. Anything that I'm really excited about. you really just say you're disciplined? Yeah. If I'm into it, I'm disciplined. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 100. No, no, no. You're disciplined in things, even if you're not into it. No, I'm That's not. That's the whole point of being disciplined. No, it's, it's not. Yes, it is. The whole point no, of being disciplined. Not. Yes, you do the hard things, even when you don't want to do okay, them. So, okay, so um, the fights are this weekend. Okay. Derek Lewis, Derek is Lewis. he disciplined in ballet? No, dummy, because he's not into it. No, He's no, disciplined no, no. in the fight because like, he's no, into no, it. No, because I... That's what I'm saying. But he doesn't like cutting weight. No, and he's terrible at it. Exactly. He see? barely gets it done. Uh, but it yeah. gets done. Okay, so yeah, he it ekes get, it out. Derek Lewis, I'm really excited. I know you're going to... I'm just so excited for that fight. When is that fight? When does that happen? Tonight. Saturday, Saturday night? Saturday night. Tonight. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Is tonight going to be your night, bro? I'm hoping tonight's my <laughs> night, bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping... Oh, I've been excited for this fight. You have a lot going on, man. You, this like, is a great main card. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry. You, you got you got the fight tonight. Yep. We, didn't you just went did, did like a oh, we escape, did room? escape room? You did escape room escape, last night with the kids. The bit, kids were all oh. pumped and excited. What they loved it. We won with we got out. With oh, wait, which one? Did you, which one did you? Wait, well, first of all, where'd you go? Oh, the I Panic Escape Room. Oh, the one right here. The one. The course. one you always go to. Yeah, you, you've done all the rooms except, except Bigfoot, except one. Yeah, yeah. So which one did you do? Uh, it's called Last Wish. It's their new one. Okay, so you, you so it's like an Aladdin theme. So, so you took, so you you took. Ooh, racist. So you took um, <laughs> so you took your kids to a room that you already knew how to beat. Yes, yes. that's exactly okay, that's it. exactly what happened. See, there's no discipline there. No, it is. Uh, it was you. For, you know how much discipline it took not to do it to just get, get out it in twenty minutes <laughs> to get out. Like, whoa, we just broke a record with fifty minutes left to go. <laughs> kids had a good time though. They had a great time. They had so great- who. Who out of your three kids mm-hmm. was one of them more of the party pooper in this experience, or were they all good? Um, I'd say I think Ariana got scared a little bit. Did she really? Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, it's loud noises and things like, like we picked that room because of the theme. So there's other themes there, and it's they're a little bit more intense. Yeah, like champagne um, room. Don't want to go to that one. I no, I don't take them to champagne <laughs> room. But uh, I don't know what those themes are. Just okay, like, yeah. Um, well, they got like alien ones and okay. like monster ones, yeah, yeah. and you know the Bigfoot one. So, what's that. this one? Like in a lat, like you're 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 in Arabian Nights. That's pretty much it. Okay, it's pretty much it. You're just trying to find Jafar, the, mon- the four monkey statues, so that you get your last wish. Okay, so you, your wish to get out. Kind oh, of thing. okay. So. Anyways, it was great. The kids loved it. Good. I, so they you were having to like prod them along. Mm. You know, I had to be like, "Hey, Ariana." Look at this board right here. It's got this timeline of key dates. Huh. Dude, the, what's that on that cube over there? It's bas- You basically turn into Dora the Explorer <laughs> is what you do. That's pretty much what happened. Can you find a <laughs> secret map? Yeah, I, I can see but it. But they loved it. And so, but here's the part. Okay, so actually we did, we haven't beat, uh, so we did do that room before, but we didn't actually beat it. You failed? We failed. Wow. And it's embarrassing. It, it was. So I will say this. We won this one, and it was only because Ariana said something to us. Oh. She goes, hey, look at this one section. The light's on it. And we're looking. We're like, oh, my gosh. Like, and, and that's yeah. how we were able to figure out at the end how to actually beat it. Well, way to go, Ariana. Uh, so Ariana saw. Ariana. And, uh, Ariana, Ariana saw, and she made the connection. But, yeah, the kids took all the credit for everything oh, and course. acted like we weren't even there. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's 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 about right. And we just sat there like, all right, let's go get some ice cream. So, yeah, it was a great family day. Good. It was fantastic. Loved it. Loved it. You know what else I'm loving? Oh, I know. I already know because you you called me about it as I, if I had, didn't already like know everything about it. You were like, wow. Are you, first uh, of all, you've been sick. I don't, first of all, no, but this was way before I was sick. They have oh six episodes out. 
It's been six okay, weeks. Okay. It's been over. It's been seven weeks because oh they had they gosh. missed a week. Joey, it's yeah. okay. Don't get so Listen, offended. I know everything you know Why before you, you know it. You here's don't need thing, to try and tell about me Joe. about anything. Here's the part you guys don't know about Joe. <laughs> Joe fancies himself an expert in nearly every field and the notion of he knew about something first. First of all, I know about everything first. <laughs> and I wouldn't say that I'm an expert, but I would say- But you dabble. I, I dabble in expertness. <laughs> It's so, okay, what are we talking about? What so, are we talking about? So it's funny. I'm, I'm only going to say this, and yeah. I'll, I'll move on. Okay. But like Steve, because Stefan and I, you know, we work together. Yeah. And we'll be like, we'll sit there, and we'll do the tel- you know, text with you and everything. Going, and then you'll do your response of, knew it. Yeah. Old news. You guys, you guys overplay this all the time. Old First news. First of all, I haven't done it in, in, in a long time because, because you guys cry like babies. No, we stopped. You cry stopped. Nope, like nope, babies. Nope. And because so then, you get all butt so hurt both, because I'm like, oh, I saw that. That was funny. That's, no, how, no, that's what I no, say. No, I that's saw not that. what you say. That is that's what, not I what I say. you say. Yep. What you say is, you're so dumb. No. Nope. Why did you send that to that, me? That, that's you being <laughs> hypersensitive. But so we'll look at it. We'll both mm-hmm. look at each other and just go, cha, and move on. Look yeah. There. there you go. Anyways. Mm, you're such a. No, you're being, you're, stop. Tolkien person. No. Yeah. No. And I do like me some Tolkien. So I know you do. I do. I'm really excited. So the Mars, was it the rise and fall? Of Mars Hill. Hill. Now. Yeah. With my man, uh, Mike Cosper. Yeah, I I am finding it incredibly engaging and interesting. Yep. Very well done. Very well done. Very well done. Um, Yeah. What I mean, episode I, are you on? I, I, I'm, I'm call, You're caught uh, up. Because um, there's going to be six more proper episodes, and then it'll be like two bonus episodes as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, Mike, let you know about it. I was supposed to be on the podcast. Oh, here we go. See, I told you. I was supposed you. to be I on. I knew it. it. Here it goes. And Mike invited See, me. I love Mike, the fact. I'm I just love saying. It. I love I'm just it. saying Mike invited me to come on. I didn't know this was about on. to happen. Uh, but I- what do you want me to say? Do you want me to not tell the truth? I'm sorry. I'm kind of important. People want me to be on podcasts and stuff. What were you going to do on it? For what? I, I, I think it was more color commentary. For what, though? <laughs> I don't know. For what? What were you going to do? Because I was How a, you weren't even involved. You were I was involved. a part of I, 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 I ate dinner with Mark Driscoll a couple times. Oh, gosh. I had dinner with Mark Driscoll once. Technically, technically. I was at the same Buffalo Wild Wings as he was, <laughs> so, but in my mind, all right, all right. it's like having dinner. How with many Mar- times? Hold on, let me ask. Let me tell you a Mark Driscoll story. All right, I'll, but I want to hear how many times have you conversed with Driscoll? Twice. Okay, that's yeah, that's yeah. two more than I thought you were yeah. going to give me. No, uh, only twice, very briefly. But I think Steve has also conversed with him in person. All right, go ahead. T- tell me the story. No, we were. Uh, so it was. Um, I think I had just. I can't remember. I, it was probably a brand new member in X29. And so um, I'm there and like a bunch of guys from the journey are there. And you're sorry. Where are you? Where, sorry. I don't even, I can't remember where like, we were. Are you in the Pacific Northwest? You I have said journey. I, so are you down by Darren Patrick? It like, might've been, it might've been Louisville. It might've been Louisville. Okay. I don't remember the location, but here's what I do remember. We're at Buffalo Wild Wings. The journey guys are there. So the journey is a church. Darren Patrick founded. And they'd be like, Hey man, tell me about where you're at. And I'm like, Oh man, I'm just, I'm nobody. I'm just pastoring this tiny church. And you got like 75 people. And they're like, no, man, that sounds awesome. Tell me about it. That's how cool these guys are. Mm-hmm. That's why I wanted to be part of the network. And then um, and then the same thing with like the guys uh, from Sojourn. They would be like, hey, so tell me about your church. And I'm like, that's nothing. It's just, you know. And they're like, no, don't wow, say dude, that. Why do you talk about your church like it's nothing? No, because I didn't want, like, I, like, I was like, yeah. You were I'm embarrassed just, of your church? No, continue. I wasn't embarrassed. I was just like saying, like, yeah, 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 I'm not, I'm just like doing, I'm just like a regular guy. Anyways. Um, so, but then they're like, Hey, listen, Mark's coming and, uh, we do not have honey barbecue. We got to get honey barbecue because Mark's coming. And I can see these guys like, listen, where's the honey barbecue? We're supposed, we got to have honey barbecue. Mark's going to be here any minute. (laughs) People are, people are scrambling to get honey barbecue wings because Mark's coming. It was so funny. I'm like, wow, somebody's a, somebody's got a dandy culture of honor sort of Mm -hmm. thing going here. You got to have honey barbecue wings. And then the other funny thing was uh, Ed Stetcher was there. Okay. And so Ed Stetcher was just talking. Yeah. Was his know. goatee there? Uh, this is pre-goatee. Okay. So he's standing there talking, I think to Darren Patrick, but somebody put a glass of beer next to Ed's arm and, and somebody took a picture and they said, we're going to post this online, Ed. At the time, Ed was very deep into the SBC, working with the institutions. And of course, he was not drinking, but they put that. Uh, oh, it was so great. It was, a, it was a good time. It was a good time. What did that have to do with Driscoll? Did Driscoll put it there? No, no. I just love that Ed was uh, was put in a precarious situation, and he literally chased the guy with the phone uh, to not post. I, I saw Ed said So in running. both of these stories. Yeah. Well, hold on. Let's stop right there. Yeah. <laughs> never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Right. In both of these stories. Yes. 
you had zero interaction with with Driscoll. Oh, I did after that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 Explain no, no. your interaction. I'd like to hear this. Like, just briefly, what you guys talk about? Just... No, we talked about planting. Okay. We talked about um, young stage of you know early church. Okay. Okay. He, I mean, he seemed fine. Yeah. You know, he, he didn't seem. The regular guys that I talked to from other churches that were there were super like amped and excited about whatever God was doing. Um, and he just, you know, he was listening. He had some thoughts, you know, he was fine. Was really so weird. let me now get back to my original question. Yes. Okay. Why would you be on this podcast? Uh, all I know is that Mike said, hey, man, you, I'm doing this podcast. You want to come on? Basically talk about, um, you know, sort of the, the good and the bad of the Driscoll thing in Acts 29. And I said, sure, man, I'll do that. But then um, he had a family crisis and emergency, mm. so that interview got canceled and it never came back up. So I'm guessing that I'm not going to be I'm not going to be uh, a part of that. Is this your hey, way of like hey, getting it out there that maybe maybe I love all it. I'm saying, I love that smile. All that I'm smile saying, that smile was for me to say right here, yeah, everyone, you need yeah. to tag Mike Cosper mm. and say, "Where is the lost Joe Thorne?" And tag Joe Thorne. Where is the lost Joe Thorne interview? For the Rise and Fall of For the Rise and podcast. Fall. Okay. <laughs> now, I'm not telling you to do that. I would not I would not say that you should I do that. I love this. I'm just, I you know. Love this. But if Jimmy thinks that's important, you know I mean, what? you know. I do think it's important, you know, Joe. There you go. I do think so. I do think so. You know why I think it's important, Joe? Mm, because? It's because I think you can be an encouragement. Oh. I really do. Okay. I really do think you can be encouragement. Mm. Because oftentimes, there are things that are a bit, yeah, discouraging. When it comes to ministry, and we've talked about that in the past multiple times. Yes, right? we have. But what about one of the aspects that's kind of discouraging? Okay. Oh, we're going to get into it. Should, do you want to? Yeah, well, let's do it. Might as well. Because it's a real thing. It is a real thing. When I think, how do you? How do we want to phrase this? Oh, so yeah. I want to phrase it. I'm, I'm going to lead into it. Can you lead into All this? Because right. I, I want the phrase to be correct. Okay. So if you're a part of a church for any length of time, mm -hmm. and if you're in leadership, especially, you're going to hear this complaint. And sometimes this complaint is completely justified, yep. very fair, and yep. sometimes it's not. But you won't know unless you give it real consideration, real thought, and real reflection and investigation. And, and the criticism or complaint or concern is this. And uh, you, you've probably experienced this before. Um, people will say, and we, we've this just came up again at Redeemer. This comes up from time to time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we've been at it for 14 years. So, you know, so every once in a while, something like this will be said. And somebody will say something like, hey, listen, I've had a very difficult time making connections to people in the congregation. And I feel sort of on the outside. And I want to be on the inside. I want to have friends. I want to have relationships. And, I, and I'm having a hard time making that happen. Sometimes people will go so far as to say, feels like there is a cool kid club that mm -hmm. I'm being excluded from. Uh, most of the time, I don't hear that, but sometimes we have heard that even at Redeemer. Mm -hmm. And so that's the issue. So I'm going to guess either you have heard that concern or complaint as you are in leadership, or you have felt that concern yourself as a person who's trying to become a part of a church and you're finding it difficult to plug in and to build relationships. There we go. I like it. And that can be uh, discouraging for people in leadership. They're like, oh, no. Well, and, and it's discouraging, not because like. You not know, because there's a complaint. Huh? Not, because there's, not a complaint, because there's a complaint, but because, oh, what well, are we doing wrong? What are we doing wrong? Yeah. So, someone feels like we don't care for them mm -hmm. when the opposite is completely true. Now, well, in most I, cases. In yeah. most cases. Stop. <laughs> and I don't think. And, and, uh, they wouldn't phrase it like, you don't care for me. You, right. don't, you don't like me. You they've, don't want, never, they've never they've said never, that. And never they don't that. mean that. And But you as a leader feel that. You yeah. feel that like, oh, I never want them to think like they're not wanted. Yeah. Like, I, I want you here. Like, I, I, the Redeemer or any church, right? Like, this church is better because you're here. Yeah. Like, in most cases. <laughs> Joey's got Joey's got some past hurts, yo. I just want you guys to know. First Joe. of all, everybody at Redeemer is awesome. I am not making any <laughs> oh, reference to oh, anybody but at those Redeemer. people that left. Oh, yeah, if they're not here anymore, then they, those people are awful. <laughs> <laughs> they obviously, they obviously, no, no, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not referring to anybody at Redeemer. No, but, but you know what I mean, yes, though, right? Totally. Like that, that feeling of, I, I, you know, you, you don't want someone to feel that because it's not true. Like, and you, you know want them I mean? to be included. Exactly. Like the whole first John thing, right? Like we want yes. you to have fellowship with us because our fellowship is with Jesus Christ, right? And with the father. Like, yeah. So we want there to be unity and friendship 
And we desperately want all of our people to feel very much a part of the church in every way. We want them to feel like, hey, they have a voice, they're heard, they're respected, they're loved, they're included. We want all of that. Mm -hmm. And yet, sometimes there is a disconnect. Now, sometimes it is, how do I put this? Oh. Sometimes the problem is that members of the church are not very welcoming. That's, that, that's, a, that's an issue sometimes. Yeah. Um, sometimes the issue is that the people who feel excluded aren't making any efforts to be included. To be, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, like, so now I'm not saying it's always a combination. I'm not saying it's always uh, one or the other. I'm just no. saying that there are different reasons why this might happen. Um, it's like the whole thing. <laughs> like I actually have, I still, I still have to do something with it. I've, I've got pages of material in my journal written on RBF and how um, sometimes uh, you feel when you, when you're feeling like people don't approach you, sometimes it's because you have a look on your face that makes that people says, run away. Yeah. It says, do not approach. Yeah. Me. Th that's your face. Yeah. Now as Christians, we need to overcome your face. Like oh we, gosh! We don't need, say it like we that. We need to get past oh, your face. You can't say it like that. We you got. No, we, you we've got to push that. through you can't, your face. You can't say it like that. But, but no, as believers, and especially as leaders, yeah. we should be intentional, though. Regardless and, and, of your and, face. And, and <laughs> I don't want you trying to say. So you can't say it like that, Joey. You can't say it. Like we should be intentional, though. In, yeah. In 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 you know involving others, and and that's a failure. I think that you know, uh, oftentimes happen within the church. Yeah. Right. Uh, and it for a, a, a number of reasons, but it's never for a lack of care of the other individual. It's never for like a lack of love for the other individual, right? It's the church is a large beast, man. Yeah, it's it's complicated. It's weird. There are established relationships, and so yeah. Let, let's say this. Um, first of all, by the way, if somebody's coming to your church and they have a look on their face that makes them less approachable, they are at your church. Take that as the sign that they want you to approach them. Yep. So don't be a baby. If you're a leader, don't be a baby. Mm -hmm. Go up there and talk to them and befriend them. And you know what you're going to find out is, oh, they're actually super cool. They just have a look. I can't tell you how many friends I've had, and I'm one of them. I'm one of the, these people. That Dude, is yeah, a you're look. the worst. I have a look on my face you're the worst that makes people go, are you mad, bro? Even your dad, we're in Vegas. Your dad's like, hey, you, you look miserable. And I'm like, I'm really happy. Yeah, That's just my look. Yeah, we're all like, yeah, yeah, cool. I'm so glad Joey's here. Yeah. What do you want me to, <laughs> sorry, what do you want me to do? Put on some lipstick and face. smile like a clown? Change your face. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll, I'll paint myself up like a clown but so everybody so, knows but, I'm happy. But, but we tried to move past your face. And that's what churches need to do. Okay, but that's, <laughs> that's a very small issue, right? The whole RBF thing is a small side issue. So let's talk about this. All right. Let's talk about legit, a, a legit concern or complaint. Hey, I'm I'm not be I'm I'm having a hard time making connections and and making my way in. What are some legitimate reasons why that might not be happening that are that's more on the church end of responsibility? All right, on the church end of responsibility. Like I'll say this. I'll say yeah, this in the yeah, front just, just, just to get it going. Like first of all, the church does have to have some procedures, some plans, some processes that bring people in like here's a newcomer's lunch yeah. yeah here's a here's an invitation to a small group like they, you've got to have some processes in place simple processes that are clarified um let people know who are no who are new here's what i need to do next here's yeah. my next point of entry or here's the on-ramp to this next thing mm -hmm. so that's a very uh basic thing but it, it i would say it's simple but it's not easy it, it's simple in that it doesn't have to be complex mm -hmm. but if you don't think it out it's not going to get done mostly. It's yeah. just it, it, once you're once you're over fifty, if you don't have a plan, it's chaos. Yeah. So you do need to have some sort of a process, and if you don't have a process, then yes, people are going to feel like they're slipping through the cracks, and they because they are. Yeah. Because there isn't a good on ramp for them to get to the next thing. That's one thing. What's another reason why people might feel like they're slipping through, even though they they really do want to be a part of a church? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, oftentimes as churches we don't want to push people away mm -hmm. right and so i think there's a fear of like coming on too strong coming on too strong yeah. looking like you're thirsty yeah. you know what <laughs> I mean? oh, churches are thirsty this church is thirsty <laughs> i love you i love you went there <laughs> but like you don't want that you so you want to like you want to give them space yes to feel comfortable 
to engage in a way that's comforting for them, right? So, you know, I, I often look at, you know, uh, introverts and I think to myself, um, well, I don't want to push them away by forcing them into something that they don't want to. If they're content there, if they're content at the the level that with where they're at, right? I because, I mean, just recently, you know, I I looked at. Uh, sorry, I want to word this, and mm. I'm not going to give any names, and we're not going to talk about this after this. Okay. Do you understand? I oh, want to make whatever. very clear. Okay. Okay. But, but we'll talk know, about it after. No, we're not. No, okay. We're not going to talk about it after. Cool. I, and I, I get it. Okay. We're not talking about it. Don't, don't, you can wink all you want, but we're not talking about it. <laughs> okay. So this means Jimmy's actually not going to tell me what he's talking about. Exactly. Go ahead. But like, you know, I invited someone in, in into being a part of something more. Yeah. Right? Because I, I, there's a lot of things I, I'm, I'm encouraged by. I see it. And then all of a sudden it was like, yeah, I'm thinking I might, we might, you know, I'm not sure what we're going to do in the future in regards to the church, you know? Oh, this, per, this person you invited. Yeah. yeah. And so part of me sits back and I go, well, you know, did I push him too far then? Right. Did I push him too far too fast to get involved? Um, because I, I see the giftings, I see this and I'm like, I want to encourage that. I want to, I want to cultivate that. I want to cultivate what I'm seeing in their lives and, and how I've been encouraged by. Um, but then did I just move too fast? Do you know what I mean? Like, the, you know, so I, I have that fear then. And, and, yeah. and this is not the only person that's ever happened. That's happened in the past. Sure. And so that's why, like, I, I'm hesitant as, as a church leader to be like, I don't want anyone to ever feel forced. Yeah. And and that's why I, I don't know. Does that? I, 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 no, it totally makes sense because, I, I, listen, there are some people who don't have those fears. They're they're super driven. They're super direct. They're those. They're very, like. I don't want to say aggressive, but they're very intentional about say, hey, this is where you need to be and you mm. need to move. And those churches oftentimes grow fast. They move people and the people that they alienate, of course, you know, yeah, they're, they're, they're shedded. They're shed off. Yeah. Right. It's, it's like they, they're, they're, they're cast away in a sense. And yeah, we are naturally uncomfortable with making people feel like like we're going to expect too much of them. We just we, we just had a, a family relatively new to the church um great people and they were asking a question and I, I, I at least one of them i think listens to the podcast so you guys know who you are uh but they were like hey uh we we've heard that um that there's a potential church plant in the future it's going to be where we live are we going to be expected to be a part of that church plant or is that a decision that's left up to us <laughs> and yeah. we were like that's that, up to you that's a hundred percent up to you we would yeah. never tell you regardless of where you live that you need to be a part of any no we, we would never do that but they but they're coming from a different perspective yeah and so it's like yeah we, we want to be careful about putting undue pressure on but people. sometimes i'm just too careful yeah i think that's the problem and that's the problem we all do that the problem for me is i'm too careful because i i i think okay maybe they're just content where they're at yeah and, and you don't want to come off like a like like on the hard sale that's it like the because like Nobody likes the hard sale. Nobody. It's like I'm out. You're, you're gonna push it on me. I don't want it. And that's it's so. Yeah, yeah. But you still got to follow up. And that's the part. I mean, here's the thing. Like in my experience, I've had people, even people that I'm really close to, feel really be like not betrayed, but really hurt that they're like, "Hey, man, you know what? I didn't come to church for like four weeks, and you never said anything." And I was like, yeah, this was years ago. I've learned to check in. Uh, but I was like, yeah, I, because I, I figured you had a legit excuse and I didn't want you to feel like I was guilting you by checking in and being like, hey, man, where you at? Why ain't you been at church? Not realizing that like there's a way to actually talk to people about, hey, man, I've missed you. I just I just mm -hmm. noticed that you haven't been there in a few weeks, man. I'm just missing you. Everything OK? And they're not going to feel like you're pressuring them if you approach it that way. Yeah. yeah. But my fear of being oppressive and controlling and condemning was prohibiting me from even just checking in and people don't like that. No. They feel like, oh, so you don't care. Yeah. I think another reason is everyone assumes somebody else is doing the work. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? And, and I think, so. Okay. I don't I don't need to go up and say something. I'm sure somebody else has. Exactly. So I think a lot of times people look and they say, okay, the leader of the group or the leader of the, like the church leaders are going to be doing it. Right. And as church leaders, we're all assuming Everybody else is checking in on everybody else, yeah. right? So there's a lot of assumptions being made there. And I think two things here. One is going back to what Joe said. As your church is growing, you need to find these on-ramps. But at yeah. the same time, you need to find checkpoints along the way yeah, that's good. of how as leaders are, you, are we making sure that people are being cared for. Mm -hmm. And then I want to say this to you know uh, people that are serving in churches or just people that are you're part of a church. Don't just assume 
that the leader has to do it all. Right. Right. Like if you're seeing someone that's not connecting and they seem to be on the sideline, invite them in. Right. You know, invite in, invite them. Like, don't assume that the leader is doing everything. Um, you can bring it up to the leader and talk and say, hey, do you know, you know what's going on? But still, like, even realistically, a leader can only do so much yeah. because, you know, you've got X amount of people in the church and you've got a small amount of leaders. And so well, they can do something. They can do some things. But you also have to remember, they're also trying to care for themselves. And right. I'm not trying to say that selfishly. Right. But like. You know, I mean, there's a reality for me, and I, uh, I'm going to give myself as an example here. Um, in the past churches that I worked at, Michelle never felt community. Mm. She, she, people were were courteous, yeah, people were kind. No one was ever mean to her, right? But she never built deep relationships. Yeah, we're at a church where she has those. Yeah. And regardless of what I think of the spouses or those, those, the women, I engage in those relationships because it's important to my wife. So what you're saying is your wife's friends are terrible, but the, but you pretend that you like them. That's what you just said. And their husbands. Oh, and their husbands. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and their children. <laughs> I know this is not true because Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy has but like, good but, relationships. But those are important, right? Yeah. It's like, because for the health of my wife and my health, yeah. right? Like we engage. And so like this notion and that, okay. Oh, can we get to, uh, we'll get to this later. We'll get to this later. You can get to it now. All right. Can I, I'm going to mention it now. It's okay for leadership to have relationships with people yeah. that you're not part of. Right. I think this, okay. So you know the, what I mean? The, the built in sort of like problem with that is that many people expect, I want to be friends. Best friends. Yeah. With the pastors. I want to be close and 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 tied to the leadership and that's just not possible not everybody can be that we see this in jesus ministry mm -hmm. he was super tight with three guys he was outside of that he was tight with 12 guys even judas mm -hmm. um and outside of that he was he was still relatively tight with the disciples that would follow him and not walk away um you you, you can't we only have so much time in a day and there's a lot of work to be done and so yeah we have a we have a little bit of margin for relationships and we cultivate those and that's great, but not, and that's the part I think you can't, like some, not everybody's going to be able to be a part of that. Those, no. And, and that, some that of the things I think people forget is like, okay, uh, again, I'm going to use our Michelle and I as mm -hmm. examples here, right? For these relationships, we've been cultivating them for eight years. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Eight years. And to expect the same level of intimacy that has been cultivated over eight years. So like if somebody else comes in and they're like, Hey, I want to have that same they're, relationship. They're, here's the problem is like, Oh dang. I, <laughs> I wish we'd save it for banter because I'm a little hesitant. The people listen to banter. I know, but like, like I, 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 I feel it sometimes where I could tell people want in. Sure. Right. And I'm cordial and I, I and I embrace that. At the same time, it's not the. It, it, it's, it's different. It's it's different, right? Yeah, because you it, because you in have my mind, eight I'm, years of experience, and I'm like, listen, I've got eight years here, and this is something different. We're going to start something new together. Yeah, right, totally. And yeah. but I can only start something new with so many people. That's right. That's why we have small groups, yeah, community groups that allow us to do that in measure. Yeah, and you know, it's like I I can meet with everybody once. Yeah, I can meet with. I mean, any church member can say, "Hey, can we meet?" And we can set it up. And yep. you, you'll never have to wait more Absolutely, than a week. Absolutely, you are approachable and accessible. So, but in terms of like tight relationships, first of all, I don't have time. I don't have time. I barely have time for a relationship with Jimmy. Okay. No, no, <laughs> we're doing great. I like so like I don't have much time, and I you know, and then of course we all have family. We got multiple kids and all this stuff, and caring for my dad. Like, oh, there's a lot going on. So. Yeah, there are people that have. So I guess we're kind of transitioning now from saying like sometimes the problem is on the church end oh, with yeah, bad yeah. systems yep. and and people not taking the initiative. But yep. sometimes the expectations uh, on the part of people who might feel isolated are a little unrealistic. Yeah, you know maybe they want. And I think like, listen, I've, I mean we. I can't tell you how many times I've talked to pastors who like who tell me, oh yeah, no people are mad that they can't be like hanging out with me like all the best time. friends. It's like I can't. Yeah, like I don't, I don't hang out. I don't have time for that. You know, I, I meet up. I do meetings. I'll meet. Uh, I'll do a meeting. But I, I, that's just. And we try. Like, 
but I don't. I can't. I can't do hangout with everybody. Like that's yeah. exactly what you're saying. But listen, I'm telling you now, I'm going to prioritize my CG and my DG. Right, your when community com- group and your discipleship. Group. That's yeah. where I'm going to prioritize the hangout. Of course. I mean, Michelle and I have talked about it for honestly for like two years. We've been thinking like, can we? F- we need to find a certain rhythm where we can invite, you know, someone we don't know from the church over for dinner. Yeah. We still, we can't find that time with uh, the schedules and everything changing and everything, but we keep trying and trying and trying. Um, But I think the expectation though, from the, uh, I think an unfair expectation is like, why aren't you doing that? Like, why aren't you meeting with everybody at, Anytime. Yeah. And I think there's a, there's a, there's a couple of things that, that make differences here. All right. We can make some distinctions. First of all, they're bivocational. And yeah. so like you have less time than I do to meet with people. I have more time to meet with people. Yeah. yeah. And so if somebody wants to meet. But like, I'm also twice as friendly as you. Oh, easily. Yeah. And you're like, I don't like so anybody. You, we got to take that into account. You might have more time. Yeah. But you got that RBF. Yeah. Hard. Hard. H RBF. So you're like at 5%. Yeah. I, I'm willing to meet with people, but they really have to want it because they're going to think that I don't want it. And, and usually you, it has to be in the cigar shop. Yeah. yeah no, <laughs> <laughs> I can't even smoke anymore. Yeah, so Joe so, wouldn't even let me smoke during the podcast. I, yeah, I can't, man. I can't. I, I, I have asked, a hard time I, breathing. What, no, but that's why I asked Here's you, the thing. What's weird is people. like, like 10 months ago, you were the guy like, I can't smoke. I can't smoke. I, I smoked yesterday. I can't smoke today. It's yeah. too much. I can't breathe. Huh? No smoking. Oh! It was I, this whole all, thing. It was this whole okay, thing. I never did that. I never did oh, that. Oh, that is I, exactly I what you did. I never did that. Your arms were like George Costanza. No. You were like, you were like, no. you were like, no. Guatemalan George Costanza. That's what you were doing. And uh, and now I'm that guy. I'm the guy that's like, no, I can't smoke because uh, I can't breathe. Yeah. What happened to you? When I wanted to smoke, you couldn't do it. You're like, can't. <laughs> no, I, but I, but still, yeah. I only, yeah, because I only smoke. I, I'm pretty. You, you, know, you have upped it. You're way more. You smoke no. way more. Yes, I no. get you. Yeah, absolutely. No, not absolutely. Absolutely. Because I know okay, when ask, you're smoking ask, at home. Because you the tell last me. Time. Ask me the last time I smoked. When was the last time you smoked? Um. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thursday. Yeah. What day is today? Saturday. Okay, so it's like three days ago. Yeah. My point is, is like, I know that you're smoking more because you tell me oftentimes when you're smoking. And I remember, but there was a time when- I did smoke in the hot tub. You're right. Yeah. No, you, dude, you used to like hardly smoke. You went through a season where you were smoking and you, you know went through a season was? when you weren't you, smoking. You know, you know the problem with it was? What's that? Is I bought that humidor. I bought that like- Oh, now I bought that thing. And I'm like, huh, it's just Look staring at, at me. cigars, yeah. It looks so pretty. Yeah. I'm in the same situation, but I can't <laughs> smoke any of it. So, okay. So here's the thing. So sometimes the problem is a legit problem with the local yeah. church and the leadership and the culture, and it needs to be addressed. And if you hear the complaint, you better take it seriously because oh, yeah. you don't yeah, yeah, yeah. know if it's a you problem or a them problem. And you know what? It's probably at least, at least a little bit of a you problem. Yeah. There's some things that you got to yes. change. Yes, yes, yes. But there is, an, uh, and, and, and I'm not speaking to anybody at Redeemer. I'm, we're talking in general. If you are feeling this way, you got to ask yourself, am I looking for opportunities to connect? That's right. Because sometimes. Brian Malcolm. <laughs> because sometimes. <laughs> I couldn't think of like. <laughs> you got to find somebody. I right? had to find someone and no one ever is going to mistake Brian Malcolm as not the initiator. Yeah, no. Brian is. <laughs> Brian will take the initiative. Rob Warford. Rob Warford. <laughs> the most hospitable person I've ever met in my life. So, um but no, like you, you've, you've got to look and say like, okay, am I making myself available? Am I looking yeah. for the opportunities? Am I, am I visiting the small group? You know, am, am I doing my part to make this connection? Because sometimes, and I, let me, let me speak as maybe a bit of a, of a, of a father figure or a brother mm, figure. Here we go. If, if spirit I'm too, of, if I'm not old enough. John, here we go. Okay. Uh, go ahead, I, beloved. Just, I just, talk I just, to your just, beloved. I just know from experience that if you keep on sinning, you are of the devil. No, um, <laughs> no. I what I'm what I'm what I want to say is like sometimes you are feeling something that is real. Yeah, I'm not connected, and you look to sort of like, well, why? It's because of somebody else. Sometimes it's because of you. Sometimes it's because you just haven't taken the initiative to say like, oh, I want to make myself available. I'm going to mm-hmm. visit a small group. And listen, that's not like, this is not a huge problem. You just need to recognize and go, hey, I need to take more initiative. And if you are feeling like you're not connecting, then you should be able to talk to your pastors. Yes. If your pastors cannot hear you compassionately and understand where you're coming from, 
uh, they, you don't want to be there. You don't want to be there. But if you can say like, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm having a hard time connecting and I'm not, I'm feeling a bit isolated. If they're good pastors, they're going to be like, I'm so sorry you're experiencing this. Let's figure this out. Let's figure out a way to make sure that you are as connected as possible because good pastors, good leaders will care. They want that more than anything. And they're willing to recognize like, hey, we might be a part of the problem here. So let's let's address that first because mm. we can fix mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. Can't, you know, I we can't fix you. I can fix me. Yeah, you, You're unfixable. No, don't stop no, is it. That, that, no, that's, that's that, not that, what no. it is. Oh, I'm But I'm only in control of yeah, what I can do. That's right. Yeah, right? I need to take responsibility <laughs> for myself. And let's get you plugged in. Well, we'd love to hear thoughts. You can follow us online on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Devo or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can head to the website, DoctrineDevotion.com. They can contact us. You can sign up for the email blast of the store, JoeFoStore.com, and grab some gear. We got that fresh pod every Monday and Thursday. We got blog posts and video content over at the website. We've got that all access exclusive. How much content. access, Jimmy? All, all access. the access. All the access. That's why aren't you? You should have all the access. You, you, you got your banter truth. Yeah, you do. On Tuesdays. Yep. You got your weekday wisdom mm-hmm. Monday through Friday. And we have lottery drawings once a month no, where you could win a million dollars. That. No, we don't have. No, that. that's not a thing. No, but pretty soon though, Joe. Mm. The new space is going to be ready. Are we going to have a studio, Jimmy? Yes. No way. Yeah. Okay, stay tuned. Yeah, I, I just went yesterday. Did you look? Yeah, I went. Oh. I went and looked. And someone else tried taking it, and I told him no. Good. So, but for you Wait, all, was access, it with Steve? And no, it might have been Greg. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> he, he tried. He's like, maybe this one. I was like, no. Yeah. I was like, nah. Okay, I mean, I'll talk to I Greg go, later. I go, this is the Doc and Devo studio. Yeah, fine. I'll talk. Don't worry about Greg. So for all you ax- all access, or don't, no, well, well, I want to thank all you all access. You if you want to awesome. join in, head on over to drvotion.com slash all access yeah. and sign up yeah. today. Join AA. Oh, all access. access. I know. But like, all access. But, yeah, I'm saying. Like, you want to join. I know. It's good. It's like a club. It, it, it is. Yeah. But I don't want you. I'm, I'm just saying not, it's a good I don't thing. Know, but I'm not going to end on that. I'm not going to end on that because no. there are some people that really should. Everybody other, should. You know, you know, you know, Everybody stop. should join all access. Just stop, just stop. Just stop. I don't understand. You know what? Just stop. Just stop. Okay, you know, I don't know what you're know, talking you, about. I'm not going to end on a joke or thing like that. I'm not joking. I, I'm just saying. I mean, everybody I'm just should saying, join. Quiet. You need the support. Just, yeah, support. All access. All access. That, Leave it at that. that. That's what I'm all saying. Access. That's right. Later. Hey, hey. I hate you. <laughs>